Hello, today we're introducing a new type of variable, dictionaries. Our video will cover four learning objectives. First, we'll want to understand how dictionaries store and group information. Second, we want to more specifically understand how this structure differs from lists. Third, we'll want to know how to implement dictionaries with key value pairs. And then fourth, we want to perform common dictionary operations. Dictionaries are a very useful data structure with many functions and methods but we'll be introducing just a few to start you off. Let's start by reviewing lists. Lists are an ordered sequence of things, and to access items within our list, we use indices. We provide an index associated with the item. Let's take a look at our example list, words, which has a list of strings containing Dr, Juan, and 47. Notice the data structure of word. Each item has a position or index. If we want a value at one of the index, say, position one of our word list, we would print words and provide index one within the brackets. Looking at our list, Juan is at index one, so we would expect Juan to be printed out. Now let's take a look at dictionaries. They store information in pairs, the key and its value. Think of it like an actual dictionary, where each entry is a pair with the word being the key and the definition being the value. Now let's take a look at its syntax. Dictionaries are defined by curly braces. So note that dictionaries use curly braces, whereas lists use brackets. Within the curly braces, you'll provide key value pairs. You'll give the pairs with the key and the value separated by a colon. And together, this creates a key value pair, and pairs within the dictionary will be separated by commas. So let's take a look at this example, my dictionary. We'll start out with the opening braces, then our three key value pairs, and then the closing of our curly braces. Now, if we look at the my dictionary variable, you'll notice that things are a little bit different from lists. Information is saved in those key value pairs. So let's compare our dictionaries to lists. Lists use indices to access information. But in dictionaries, you access items with keys. So let's take a look at our example, our info dictionary. We have key value pairs of name and Juan, age and 47, and job and doctor. Now, if we want to access information, we're going to call the dictionary. And then within the brackets, we're going to give a key, not an index. So if we want to access information from our info dictionary, more specifically, the value associated with the name key, we would provide the name key within the brackets. Now, looking at the dictionary, the value that would be printed would be Juan, based on this key value pair. Note that Python keeps these pairs in order, but other languages don't necessarily do this. So it's more important that you understand the key value pair structure that is used for dictionaries. There are advantages to using dictionaries. Dictionaries allow you to store large amounts of information. It's a useful structure when you have a lot of data. The retrieval of information within a dictionary is fast. This allows you to create efficient code. And then the last advantage that we want to touch on is its logical structure of data. That is more important than the physical structure of the data. That means dictionaries are organized with key value pairs, and these two values are connected or associated with each other. So if we look at job and doctor, those are associated with each other. Whereas when we look at lists, which use physical positions, doctor is associated with this index value of zero, and there's no relational meaning. Dictionaries have a few requirements that you must be aware of as you create and utilize them. The first being that keys must be unique. If you try to add something with a key that currently exists, you would essentially be replacing the old value with a new value. And we'll take a look at an example on the next slide. Dictionary keys must be immutable. Now we've talked about immutable variables before. Remember, they're strings, integers, floats. For our class, the keys that we primarily use will be strings. Values do not have to be unique. So note, that two different keys can map to the same value, and that's OK. Values can be immutable or immutable. So let's take a look at a few examples. Remember, 
we want dictionaries with unique keys, so only each key once, but the, the different keys can have the same values. So in our first example here, Info Dictionary holds some contact information. It has two key value pairs, name and Juan, nickname and Juan. The keys are unique with the same value of Juan, and that's okay. Now let's take a look at the second example. We have a dictionary with two key value pairs again. This time it's name and Juan and name and John. This is not valid because we are using the same key multiple times. Remember, keys must be unique. Now with a basic understanding of dictionary structures and requirements, we're going to be going over implementation and use. First, how to create a dictionary, then how to add, replace, and remove a key value pair, and then how to access values in a couple of ways. First, create a dictionary. You can create an empty dictionary just by using the curly braces. And so here we have the dictionary stuff and it's empty. You can also create dictionaries with initial key value pairs. So here we have an example. Info has three key value pairs. Name, Juan, age, 47, job, doctor. Now you can access information within your dictionary. You can do so in a couple of ways. This first one we've already seen on a previous slide. You can provide it with a dictionary name and within the brackets provide the key. So in this example, we have the info dictionary. We provide it with the key name. And so if we look at our info dictionary, our key name has a value of Juan. So username will be Juan. Another way to access information is to use the get method. Get is a dictionary method. We can call our dictionary and then use dot get. And then within the parentheses, we will give it a key. In this case, we provide it with name. And so looking at our key value pair, again, username will be Juan. Both of these methods allow us to access the value given the key name. The takeaway here is that we're using keys to access information within our dictionary. When you're reading from a dictionary, you can potentially get an error, especially if the key that you provide is not in the dictionary. Here, we provide a key hobby, but hobby does not exist within our info dictionary. Another error is using the value instead of a key. Here we're using Juan, which is a value associated with the name key. This will give an error because we cannot search for information using the value. Since Juan is a value and not an existing key, this will create an error. If we want to read values from an entire dictionary, we can use a for loop. So here we see for key in info. Here key will represent a different key in the iteration. Within our for loop, we're printing our key, a colon, and then accessing the value. And so if we run this, we'll see job colon doctor, name colon Juan, age colon 47. Okay, so we've looked at different ways of reading a dictionary, but maybe after creating a dictionary, we wanna add to it. We can do that by calling our dictionary and then within the brackets, giving a new and unique key and setting that equal to our value. So we can see our key value pair there. Remember, this should be unique from any of the existing keys. So if we run this, we'll see that our key value pair kids2 has been added to our info dictionary. We can also replace and update key value pairs using the same method. This time we're going to be using an existing key within the brackets. Age is already a key within our info dictionary. We want to now replace that value of 47 with 34. And so we just set it equal to 34. And so if we pay attention here, when we run this, this value will now update to 34. So replacing and adding key value pairs is similar, but note that when you're adding, the key will be unique. And when you're replacing, you'll be using an existing key. Okay, let's take a look at some common dictionary operations. The first one being the len function. We've used the len function in the past, but when you use it on a dictionary, it's going to count the number of key value pairs. So here, if we take the len of our info dictionary, size is four, and that's because there are four key value pairs within our info dictionary. Another thing you can do is you can check if a key exists within a dictionary using branching and the reserve word in. 
For example, if we want to check if age is a key within our info dictionary, we can do if age in info. If this evaluates as true, age is a key within our dictionary, and then it'll print found key age. This can be used to check if a key is within our dictionary before using a method or accessing something within the dictionary. That will allow you to avoid errors. However, this cannot be used to check if a value is in the dictionary. Dictionaries are great for the retrieval of values by providing keys, but it's not great in reverse. If you want to check if a value is within a dictionary, you need to check using a for loop, iterating through your key value pairs, and accessing each value to check. Now, if we want to remove a value, you'll use the pop method. You'll provide the key for the key value pair that you'd like to remove. You'll call your dictionary dot pop, and then in parentheses, you'll provide that key. So in this example, we'll be removing this key value pair, kids2. So we provide it with kids. And so when we run this, we'll notice that that key value pair disappears. Now, it's important that you want to make sure that keys exist before using the pop method to remove it. If we try to remove a key value pair, say using hobby as a key, that's going to give us an error because hobby isn't a key within our info dictionary. The same thing will happen if you provide it with a value. Remember, the pop method takes a key as an argument, not the value. A safe way to getting around a potential error would be to check first if that key is inside our dictionary. So here we'll use if hobby in info, and if that evaluates as true, that means hobby is a key within our info dictionary, we can then pop it off and remove it. And if it evaluates as false, we then don't try to pop off something that doesn't exist. Lastly, if you want to get a list of all the keys, you can use the keys method associated with dictionary variables. There are no arguments. This will give us an object, a dict list, with all of the keys. The values method does the same thing, but gets you an object with all of the values instead. Again, this will output a dict list with all of the values. If you need the information as lists, make sure that you convert these into lists. And that is a brief introduction to dictionaries. And here is a table of some methods that may be useful to you as you familiarize yourself with the variable type.